Hello Ratbags, it's Jade, welcome to an Unturned video, a guide today, yes, Unturned on Xbox and PlayStation, duh, it's out, it's been out this week, I thought I'd do a guide for you guys, I've already done a how-to or what is Unturned, and if you guys like this kind of content, then make sure you like the video, and maybe I'll do some more tutorials. Unturned's been around six years now, but a lot of that information is out of date, or it applies to the PC version only, or it's been an update that was pretty old, so I thought it's important to show you guys actual proper gameplay, and some tips from the Xbox and PlayStation versions. It is slightly different in some cases. Today I'm going to show you guys how you can keep all of your skill points and your class points on your private world. There's a setting that you can change so that you don't lose anything when you die. I'm also going to take you through what I think my personal favourite skills are and I'm going to explain a little bit better what the classes are and what kind of benefits you get. In fact I'm going to list exactly what the benefits are and what you get from them all. So like I said, if you find it useful, hit me up with a like, make sure you're subscribed and go and check out all my other survival content. If it's been out on Xbox or PlayStation the last five years, I have covered it and I've probably done guides for it. Subnautica, Ark, Conan, DayZ, you name it, I am the survival console king, if I do say so myself. So yeah, any tips, anything like that, I'll be your guy. Also go and check out my Assassin's Creed Valhalla stuff as well, I'm really enjoying that. Let's go, Unturned, Skills and Classes Explained. If you're playing offline, choose whatever map it is that you want, then click World Options, the triangle or the Y button, head over to the Players tab, and then go all the way down until you find something with Lose Items. So losing items on Combat Death or Environmental Death, if you leave that at one, you're gonna lose everything. But for skills, it's actually a bit different. The default settings for this are that you lose 75% of your skill points when you die. Put it all the way to one, do the same thing for environment death, and that will mean that you'll keep your skills when you die. There's far too many of these options to go through in this video, but I will be doing a separate one, just taking a look at all the settings and explaining exactly what they do and what way you should be turning them left or right to make it easier or harder. I thought that was useful for now, one important tip as well is that whenever you've got a skill, so like, again, the civilian, if I put any points into overkill or mechanic, it's actually going to be cheaper to upgrade over time. In fact, they'll be 50% cheaper. And that's the same for all classes. Whatever skills they are, they're going to be cheaper to upgrade. You can see my exercise skill for my policeman. There it is. It's only going to cost five points. Likewise, you're not meant to lose your skills when you die. Your specialist skill progress. It's only the rest of the skills that you lose when you die. Now this is the same for every single one of the classes. If you're a police officer, your exercise and toughness is going to be cheaper to get. If you're black ops, your sharpshooter dexterity is also going to be cheaper. So bear that in mind. Now you may be thinking that civilians aren't that useful, but their overkill perk is pretty good for starters. You're going to do heavy melee damage to players and zombies and animals. At level 1 it's 7% melee damage, and at level 7, which is 70 points, 50% extra melee damage. The civilian also has the same perk as a worker in that you can have mechanic. It's a pretty rubbish one to be honest. I think the civilian and the worker are probably two of the worst. The firefighter's got actually some pretty decent skills. The strength ability there will really help you survive against zombie attacks. If you're playing on normal or harder server where bleeding is on, it lasts a lot shorter. Broken bones are going to be less effective and you can jump from height and not lose as much health. You can still break your legs though so be careful. If you get to level 5 in the firefighter skill, you'll be able to reduce your bleed, your broken bones, by 50%. You'll also be able to survive up to 75% full damage. When it comes to cardio, you obviously get your stamina back quicker, you'll get more oxygen when you're out of the water, and again at level 5, it's going to cost you 30 experience points, that's going to give 50% extra stamina regeneration, and the same goes for oxygen. So maybe useful for some of the maps that have got more water, or particularly flooded cities and towns. Police officer has got similar attributes to the firefighter. At level 5 you're going to have 25% extra movement speed, but even better than a firefighter because of the exercise perk, at level 5 you'll have 250% extra stamina while running. So this is really good for getting across large maps or for completing missions. A lot of the time the missions ask you to go around massive amounts of space in the map, so having this guy will get you there quicker if there are no cars. At level 5 you'll only use 50% of your stamina bar for power attacks. It's pretty much meaning you can get more attacks in with your special power button. Obviously the starting stats for these are pretty small. You're only going to get 5% extra movement speed for level 1. 
but the effect two is going to give you 50% stamina use for running and effect three is going to be 10% stamina use for power attacking. Just give you an idea between the differences between level one and level five. The toughness is maybe not as helpful. It just depends on how much you're close to dying. When you fall below 20 health, the screen starts getting black. Also, it starts getting dark when you're at night time and the temperature is going down. Instead of going black, the screen's gonna go gray. You'll flinch less when damaged. I wouldn't say it's the best skill, but it is obviously something just to complement the exercise skill, which is pretty OP. If you've got a bunch of zombies attacking you, the flinch can be useful for getting out of a situation. Otherwise, they kind of stun you and that's it, you're brown bread. Let's take a look at Spec Ops with Sharpshooter and Dexterity. Pretty much you'll get less recoil when shooting guns. It's going to be easier to aim. You'll have less spread and you'll be able to aim from the hip or directly through aiming. This is one of the best ones for actual proper PvP. If you want to go out there and rampage against other players, then this could be a really good one. At level 1, you're only going to get a 7% reduction in gun control. But at level 7, you can get extra 50% gun spread recoil reduction. Dexterity is going to allow you to reload a lot quicker and you'll also be able to hammer too. You pretty much can pull back the bolts on sniper rifles and shotgun pumps too. It'll be a lot quicker. At level 1, you'll be able to get a 10% reload speed. And at level 5, you're going to get 50% reload action. And it's the same for actual reload time. So both of them are going to be really useful for combat. The Farmer is definitely a good one for PvE players. If you're just playing on a private server and just want to survive, get used to building and growing your crops, you'll lose food a lot slower, you'll lose water a lot slower. In fact, level 1, you'll only have a 5% reduction in food and water. But at level 5, you get a 25% reduction. That's quite substantial. That means you'll have to eat a hell of a lot less. The agriculture skill is going to give you, obviously, quicker plants. You'll also get more chance to get double the amount of fruit and veg. At level 1, you'll get a 3% start-in rate on seeds. And at level 7, it will be 25% extra. So it's basically 25% quicker to grow your plants. At level 1, your crops and berries are going to have a 14% chance for dropping twice as much when harvesting. If you get that to level 7, you're always guaranteed to get twice as much whenever you go and harvest any of your crops. So as I said, really good for PvE servers. We just want to explore. You don't have to worry about food and water. Or if you're playing with friends, this could be a really good support one. So the fisherman's great at obviously fishing and diving. At level 1, you'll have a 5% extra swim speed and you'll only use 50% oxygen. At level 5, you get a 25% extra swim speed and it's a 250% less oxygen consumption. For fishing, obviously you need the lure bar. At level 1, it's going to give you a 20% extra reaction time so you can catch the fish. And at level 5, it's going to give you a 100% extra reaction time. So that's double the amount so you can catch loads loads of fish. I wouldn't say it's the better skill out of some of these. I would still probably go for something like the firefighter as it's got similar attributes in helping you with oxygen. The lumberjack is probably going to be one of the best classes if you're on a snowy or cold map. At level 1, you're going to have 20% reduction in freeze damage. You'll also need 20% less food. At level 5, you're going to have 100% freeze damage taken away. So you still can take damage, but it is going to be a hell of a lot less. The same goes for food. You'll have 100% less need for food. Obviously, because he's a lumberjack and he loves swinging his axe, you're going to do a lot more damage to trees and boulders. This is a great way to get lots of scrap. At level 1, you're going to do 10% extra damage. But at level 5, you're going to do 50%, which means you'll harvest trees and rocks 50% quicker. The worker's skill is going to pretty much have more recipes. You'll also be able to repair a lot more of machines like cars and stuff that break down. Definitely useful if you are playing with your friends and you're again going to be support role. Level 1, you're going to unlock improvised item recipes. So you'll be able to make wooden bows, rifles, bats, clips, rockets, rods, jerry cans, bottles, makeshift mufflers, scopes, grenade, landmine and a claymore. It does cost 20 experience points to get to level 1 though. So it's pretty expensive in terms of what you're going to need. At level 2, you'll be able to get basic structure recipes. So you can make things like explosive arrows, C4, garage frames, door frames, all made out of metal. You'll also be able to get a makeshift vehicle. And you can get metal floors, pillars, posts, roof, ramp, stairs, hole, wall, doorway, garage, windows and ramparts. This is the guy you want to build your base on PvP servers. It could be well worth building it and then swapping out a character once you've got all of your base built. And at level 3, which you're going to need 80 experience points to get, 
be able to make lockers, vault doors, metal gates, jail door, fortifications, ladders, signs, generator, spotlight. You'll also get a safe zone radiator, hauled beacon, a claim flag. You'll be able to make the four-seater vehicle and a six-seater vehicle too. Now, I've not actually come across them two vehicles yet. So I dug around and on PC, they're there. But as I said, I've not seen him yet on my actual playthrough of Unturned just yet. And then don't forget in his mechanic skills as well. At level one, you're gonna have 40% extra repairing speed. And at level five, you're gonna get 200% extra repairing speed. So far, I've found quite a few cars. There's plenty of gas in the towns, so you maybe not necessarily need that second one as much. Now in the past, the worker was able to have the engineer perk as well, but I've taken that away for the console versions or in a previous update. Oh, monsieur, you'd let some food, huh? The chef is going to get you lots and lots of good bonuses for cooking. He's also got a pretty decent vitality perk. Basically, get to 90% of your food and water and you will start replenishing your health. You'll do this a lot quicker. At level 1, it's 10%, but at level 5, it's 50% extra. Meaning, if you've always got food and water, you won't necessarily need as many bandages. And then for cooking skills, level 1 is going to give you a bunch of stuff like bacon, cooked beef, bread, milk. Level 2 is going to be tuna sandwich, waffles and donuts and pancakes. Mm. And level 3, which is 80 points, you can make proper meal recipes. So these are cake, pumpkin pie and pizza. The thief class is for when you want to just go and steal stuff, particularly from other players. You'll be able to jump a little bit higher. You'll use less stamina when you jump in. At level 1, it's 5% extra jump height and 10% less stamina used for jumping. And at level 5, it's going to give you 25% extra jump height and 50% less stamina, meaning they can pretty much get on top of some of your bases. It also has the sneaky beaky one. Players won't be able to hear you coming as much, your footsteps will be reduced. And zombies and animals will also have their alert range when reduced. So you'll be able to get up close to them and hopefully give them a stun knockout from behind. At level 1, you're going to get 11% noise reduction. At level 2, you're going to get 11% NPC reduction. At level 7, 75% noise when moving and 75% detect range. Doctor, Doctor, I've fallen and I can't get up. The Doctor is the one that if you keep getting bit by zombies, this might be the best one. If you get bit, you're going to have 10% less zombie infection. At level 5, you'll have 50% less zombie infection. It also stops you getting diseases and sickness. It'll give you disease, you'll have 50% less chance of getting it. Now, it's meant to also give you immunity against hallucinations. I have not really had that just yet. I've not really found too many things that have given me some diseases, but it's the same thing. You'll get a less reduction chance at level one and 50% less at level five. And healing is probably its best one. At level one, you're gonna get 7% extra health and immunity when you either eat something or you heal someone else. At level seven, which costs 70 points, you're gonna be able to do a 50% health boost and immunity applied to you or someone else. So pretty much any time you use bandages, morphine or anything like that, it's going to heal you massively. So what are my favourite skill sets or character classes? Let's go. The two best for me could be something like the Doctor, so you can heal yourself better, and the Spec Ops, particularly for PvP. If you're wondering what the random boost is as well, that's four different skills that you've got a random chance of getting. If you want to have a gamble, you can use 25% of your points, and you can either get things like Splatterific, Hardened, Olympic or Flight. Some of them are pretty jokey, like the flight one means that ragdolls and jack cars are going to fly loads and loads further out. Splatterific means that 700% extra blood splatters. Hardened is a pretty useful one, it's going to give you 25% less damage from zombies. And Olympic means you'll be able to throw things a lot faster and harder. So yeah, I wouldn't necessarily waste your points on them too much, unless you get super lucky and you get the Hardened, the rest of them are pretty useless. Also with the random boost that when you go ahead and buy another one, it does replace the first random boost that you had. And each time you'll get a random chance of getting one of these. So there you go, I hope that's helped you guys understand a little bit more about skills. It does explain exactly what each one is, but hopefully I'll give you an idea about which ones are best. When it comes to actually which one's best for each class, as I said a couple times now, the Spec Ops is the best if you're going out there to do lots of PvP. The Dots is going to be one of the better ones if you're playing lots of just you on your own running around the map. And I think the Thief is a pretty good one if you want a little bit of a mix. You want to see if you can go into other people's bases and steal their stuff. 
or just get around and avoid most zombies. Let me know your favorite one and why, and I will take more look at this when I've leveled up some more characters and shown you some places around the map. Unturned's been around a few years and you'll find a lot of conflicting information. That's why I thought it was really good to do a guide right now, as I said at the start. So I hope you find these enjoyable. Like the video if you do, and I'll see you rat bags for more very soon.